YouTube. What is going on, y'all? It's your boy KBZ. And yeah, a little bit different type of video today. Um, today I'm gonna be doing sort of like a vlog, sort of commentary on how to get paid as a producer. But yeah, I finally decided to do this video today because a couple people have been asking me, and I was already thinking about doing it anyway. So yeah. But yeah, one thing before I get into the video, um, I just dropped my Fired Up Scientist hoodies. It's been a while since I announced them, but they're finally out now. Go to kbz.myshopify.com and you can cop one. But yeah, they're only gonna be on sale for like maybe a week, something like that. So if you want one. Make sure to go cop. Also, if you cop one, DM me on Instagram, which, by the way, my Instagram is at KBZTheGod. And yeah, if you DM me a uh, proof of your order with a screenshot or, like, your order number or whatever, then I will actually send you a free kit of your choice. So yeah, if you want a hoodie, if you want to support me, make sure to go cop one of these hoodies. Uh, they're really dope. They're really nice quality. So yeah, if you're new to the channel or maybe you just haven't been following me for uh, that long, I'm going to just do a little rundown of sort of my come up for the last year. So yeah, when I started producing, it was, like, two and a half, almost three years ago now. But yeah, uh, I started uploading beats, started messing around. Maybe, like, six Six months later, I uploaded my first beat to YouTube, and then maybe four to five months after that, uh, I actually started uploading like for real, for real. But yeah, back then it wasn't tutorials, it was just type beats. And yeah, it took me a few months of uploading type beats to finally get my first sale. And I remember uh, when I got my first sale, I think it was like 30 bucks for a lease. It was like a Future X Southside type beat. But yeah, I still remember what beat it was to this day. I just remember being so hyped. Like I, that was probably the most hyped moment of my life at that point, just because I'd been working so damn hard, you know, working on my beats. Just really trying to just get one sale and yeah if you're a producer and you've never sold a beat before you've never gotten any money off your beats or maybe you've just gotten one sale you know that feeling of it's like when you get your first sale it's really just like wow I can actually sort of do this so yeah from that point on I was fully committed uh, but yeah I was uploading beats every single day for like the next four months I was getting like sort of some sales but yeah that's when I just really started to apply myself to making beats and making music because I saw potential and I really was passionate about it so I just really wanted to do it but yeah I remember back then I always used to question how to make money you know when I get placements, how am I going to make money, how to get paid off sound kits, all that stuff. But yeah, in this video, I'm just going to be talking about different ways to get money as a producer. Because I think a lot of the times, uh, producers think that there's just one revenue stream or they have to limit themselves to, you know, just one thing or, you know, one way of making money. And that's not the case at all. A lot of other professions, a lot of other jobs, especially ones that, you know, maybe aren't a salary job, because I know for me, I could never go to an office and like work a job. Well, I could obviously, but you know, I just wouldn't be happy. So yeah, for jobs where you're working on your own, you got to have multiple revenue streams. If you look at any successful person, most likely they're gonna have multiple revenue streams. So yeah, I'm just gonna be talking about different ways to get money as a producer. So yeah, first off, the obvious one, especially when you're just starting out making beats, you can upload your beats to YouTube and get sales, get leases, get exclusives that way. So yeah, I don't really do it anymore just because I'm at a point financially and you know there's a point in my career where I really don't have to anymore. And there's a reason I don't as well, which I'll explain later. But yeah, when you're just starting off and you wanna make a name for yourself, you wanna get a little bit of traction maybe on YouTube, you wanna get your name out there, you can start uploading type beats on YouTube. You can upload type beats uh, I would get a subscription to BeatStars or Airbit I use BeatStars personally and you can sell your beats so yeah pretty much there's a few ways to sell beats you can sell a lease which is like you can sell it to an unlimited amount of people so let's say five people want to lease a beat for 25 bucks then all five of them can buy it all five of them can use it or you can do trackouts for more expensive you know I think like 70 to 100 bucks maybe 150 for trackouts and then that means they just get trackouts for the beat and they can arrange it however they want or you can get an exclusive and how most internet producers do it at least is when somebody buys an exclusive, that's the last person to get the beat and you won't sell any more leases, you take the beat down. Me personally, I don't upload type beats anymore just because I don't really need the extra money from those sales right now. To me, it's all about branding, right? And you know, I don't wanna devalue my beats by just having my beats all across the internet. I think sort of the appeal of the top producers is that, you know, it's hard to get a beat from them. Like, it's sort of rare to hear a Metro Boomin tag in a song or a murder tag or whatever it may be and I wanna do the same thing for my beats. So that's sort of my personal thinking about why I don't do it anymore. But yeah, when you're starting out, that's definitely a good way to make money. All right, another way to make money is sound kits. So yeah, whether it's loop kits, MIDI kits, drum kits, whatever it may be, if you upload tutorials or even if you just have a following uh, of producers on you know Instagram or YouTube, whatever it may be, you can sell sound kits. This is definitely a very good way to make money. There's a lot of producers out there and one thing that every producer is always gonna need is sounds. So if you can sell loops or drum kits or whatever it may be to upcoming producers, um, that's gonna be a, a big help to them. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of people complain about recycled sounds and stuff like that, but when you're starting out as a producer you know it's really hard to know where to find the best sounds I remember when I used to start out I had no idea where to find the drum kits or where to find the drum sounds or what VSTs to use stuff like that so uploading tutorials or just 
compiling sounds is a good way. But yeah, me personally, I don't just copy and paste stuff into my own drum kits. I try to take sounds and edit them, you know, spice them up a little bit, touch them up, just make them as good as I can. So yeah, if you can find drums or make your own drums or just, you know, add effects to drums to make them sound as good as they can. Or if you can make your own loop kits or midis, which I personally don't make midi kits just because that like enters into the whole world of like people stealing your midis and it's really hard to find sometimes. And I just don't personally want to get involved in that. That's why I only sell loop kits because it's a lot easier to tell um, and get it cleared but yeah that's definitely another good way to make money because uh, there's always gonna be producers out there and if they support you they will support your sound kits so definitely consider that as well also I think you know when you start selling sound kits that sort of stems off from when you start doing tutorials like and showing people how to make beats oh, I, got the hiccups. Bro, I get the hiccups every time I'm recording a video yo <laughs> Yo, bro. <laughs> but yeah, I think a lot of people sort of worry about um, like showing the sauce or whatever it may be. Honestly, don't even worry about that. If you're making tutorials, the thing that separates you from other producers is not the sauce. It's it's you. It's your own talent. It's your own ear for things. So I wouldn't even worry about that. In my opinion, I always view uploading tutorials as a good thing because it sort of just helps the producer community and, you know, in a way sort of advances the producer community in general and sort of pushes the sound forward, I think. But yeah, definitely uploading tutorials and sound kits along with that is definitely a good idea as well. All right. Also, when we get into the world of place that's probably down the line for a lot of people watching this video because even for me I'm just now getting my first placements getting my first songs registered and stuff like that but yeah uh, just to sort of break it down from the knowledge I've gained in the past year because I remember when I got my first placement when I started really getting songs with bigger artists I was like super confused on how to get paid you know I didn't really know what I was doing but now I know what I'm doing so hopefully my advice can help you guys so you guys have a little bit better of an idea when you get your first placement but yeah pretty much when you get your first placement you need a lawyer 100% you need a lawyer and it's got to be an entertainment lawyer that knows the industry because if you have a good entertainment lawyer, they're gonna know who to contact at the label or the artist lawyer or whatever it may be to get you paid. I think especially nowadays, a lot of producers' first placements come from a loop, so they'll send a loop to a popular producer who will get the song with you know, an artist and that will be, you know, one of your first big placements. Because let's just be real, that's a lot easier than making the connections with the artist. So a lot of the times when you're just starting out, that's an easy way to get your first placement. That's why I got my first placement. I know a lot of people whose first placement came from that. There's nothing wrong with that. You should definitely still be proud of it. But it is sort of confusing on how to get paid. So yeah, this all stems from having a good relationship with the producer that you're collabing with. I personally don't send my loops to producers that are shady or are going to try to fuck me over in any way. I only send them out to people that you know, I'm close with, I talk with, and I know they have my best interests in mind. But yeah, so when you get the placement, pretty much you're gonna get paid in a few ways. So you're gonna get paid in an advance, which is pretty much money you receive up front for your beat being used. You're gonna get paid in royalty points, and you're also gonna get paid in publishing. Now, a lot of people confuse publishing and royalties, um, so I'm gonna try to explain that for you guys because I remember I used to be super confused on this. So yeah, when you get your advance, it's usually when you start off, it's probably gonna be between like two grand and five grand. Uh, it really just depends on how much the label is gonna pay until you get your like cloud up and you can like sort of demand more money. But yeah, you're gonna get a producer agreement and it's gonna outline how much money you're gonna get paid in the advance and it's gonna you know say how many royalty points everyone's receiving on the song and the publishing on the song. So when you have a lawyer uh, hit up the label for you, they're gonna get you your producer agreement. So you're gonna know how much you're gonna get paid, you're gonna know how many points you're getting, you're gonna know how much publishing you're gonna be getting. So yeah, when you look at royalty points, royalty points is the money that's earned off the master recording of the song. So all of the streams on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, uh, those streaming services pay out uh, like a fraction of a cent. It's a really small number per play. But over time, if your song's getting millions or hundreds of millions or you know whatever, how many streams, that's gonna add up. But if you're working with an artist that's signed to a label, the label is usually gonna be taking 85 to 90% of the royalty because they own the master recording that's how most record contracts work when an artist signs with a major label they give up their masters so yeah that's just usually how it works so the label is gonna be receiving you know almost all the royalties from the song the artist will maybe get like 10 to 15 percent or you know it varies and then the producer is usually gonna get between two and six points as you know from my experience so yeah a point is pretty much a percent I heard a joke that they're called points because the record labels want you to feel cool like oh I'm getting a point because saying that you get one percent of a song you made yourself is sort of a shitty idea to think about but yeah that means that pretty much you're gonna getting paid 1% or 2%, 3%, 4%, whatever it may be of the money earned off the sales and streaming of the song. So yeah, obviously to make a substantial amount of money from that, you have to produce a pretty big song. Like if your song's not getting millions of plays, you're pretty much not gonna see anything from your royalties. But the other way that producers mainly get paid is publishing. So yeah, publishing is pretty much uh, the money you're owed every time a song's played on the radio, in a live venue, you know, at a concert, 
on TV, in commercials, etc. So yeah, typically the producer gets 50% of the publishing and the artist gets 50% of the publishing. So yeah, in your producer agreement, you should try to get 50% publishing if you're the only producer on the song. And obviously that can change if there's multiple producers involved and the splits are gonna change and stuff like that. But if you're the only producer, you should try to get 50% publishing. That's standard, that's what you deserve. So yeah, pretty much every time your song's played on the radio or in a live venue or on TV or if your song's licensed in a commercial or a movie or whatever, you're owed money. So I recommend if you're you know on the cusp of getting placements or you're starting to get placements, sign up for BMI or ASCAP, that's gonna be how you get your publishing checks. They pay out like four times a year. It's like a little delayed, like uh, I think the next royalty payment for ASCAP and BMI is like quarter four, 2018, or it might be even still be quarter three. So it takes a while for you to get paid, so that's gonna be like down the line. But yeah, ideally, that's why you get an advance and your sound kits and your other stuff of that nature, because your sound kits, your advances, if you're still doing online beat leasing and stuff like that, you can make money, you know, immediately, and that's money that's gonna hit you immediately, and then while you get placements, you're gonna have to wait for your royalties, uh, you're publishing all that stuff to come back to you and then you're getting money on the back end and the front end. So yeah, also recently I started a Twitch channel. I think Twitch is a good way to live stream. I think it's better than YouTube streaming personally. Uh, there's just better features and it's just, you know, I think it's just a better service in general. But yeah, getting subscribers on Twitch and stuff of that nature is also a good revenue stream. But yeah, you can also think of things like merch and you know, other smaller things as well. But yeah, I hope this video explains some things to you guys such as like advances and royalties and publishing because I know that used to confuse me when I was starting out. And I also hope it explains to you, uh, you know, the different other ways you can make money as a producer because it is not just limited as one thing. The age of the internet has completely changed being a producer. You do not just have to get paid off of royalties and advances and stuff like that anymore. There's a million different ways you can get paid. So yeah, use the internet as a tool. Uh, use that to your advantage because it's completely opened the door for a, a ton of new ways for producers to make money. But yeah, if this video helped, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for 75,000 subscribers. We just hit 75K. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for all of your guys' support over the past year because uh, obviously if y'all had not supported me, I probably wouldn't know how to get paid as a producer. So this video wouldn't even exist. So yeah, if this video helped you, you guys can thank yourselves because you allowed me to make this video. Also, if you want one of these Fight Up Scientist hoodies, uh, link is in the description, kbz.myshopify.com. If you buy one and you DM me proof of your order on Instagram, I will send you a free sound kit. But yeah, that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, morning, afternoon, night, whatever time it is, wherever you're watching, and I'm out. Peace.